Amy. So you gave us so many tips last month mm -hmm. for the 24 Day Jumpstart. And one of the things that I noticed was that you emphasized eating fruits and vegetables. Yes. I know that one in 10 Americans don't eat enough vegetables in their diet. Mm -hmm. And actually, I take that back. Opposite. It is the opposite. Only one in 10 yeah, eat so enough. Right, so 90% of Americans yeah. don't get enough yes. vegetables and fruits. So my question to you is, what are some things that we can do to incorporate mm -hmm. more fruits and vegetables into our diet? So the thing that I always recommend to people is try to incorporate them into meals and snacks that you already like. Okay. So fruit is often a little bit easier for people because <laughs> it's got that natural sweet. Yes. But ways you can think of adding in fruit would be like blending it into smoothies in the morning. So that obviously can add a pop of color, it can add a pop of flavor, and as well as getting some veggies in as well. So whether that's spinach or kale, if you blend it into a smoothie, the truth is, if it's got fruit in it, you really don't taste it. Now, it becomes a very bright green color, but <laughs> then you can actually get a lot of nutrients by blending that into a smoothie. Another way you can do that in the morning mm -hmm. is by mixing veggies into eggs. So say you're an okay. egg liker, so scrambling up eggs. One of the most fun ways that I love, if you've never made the egg muffin cups, so you make them like eggs, okay. you know, like scramble up, yes. and then you put them in little muffins. This is great for busy families, families on the go, because you can prep these on the weekend, keep them in a store tight container mm -hmm. in the fridge, but you can mix and match the veggies, the cheese, the protein, easy little serving sizes to go if you don't have enough time to make eggs in the yeah. morning. So scrambling those veggies into the egg cups or eggs are a really great way to get them in. Another way for fruit is incorporating them into like salads or incorporating them even to like cold grain salads. So a lot of people yeah. forget about like the couscous or farro or quinoa, the cold salads. Yeah. Using fruit or even a dried fruit can be a great option to add a pop of color, a pop of flavor to some of those different cold salads. And of course, you can always add fresh fruit to a green salad. Yeah. Again, a great way to add some color and some flavor. Eating fruits and veggies at snacks sounds a little crazy, but incorporating them in and trying to make a conscious effort to say, let me get a fruit, let me get a veggie, let me get two different colors of them. A lot of people don't realize that the color often indicates the nutrient package Absolutely. and different colors indicate various nutrients. And so that's why we tell people to eat a rainbow of colors so that they can get that in. And then of course in the evening, you know, I said, go get creative. Could you put veggies on a pizza? Could you, you know, shred up some veggies if your family loves you know, meatballs and spaghetti. Could you shred up some veggies in there where maybe your kids kind of learn to acquire the flavor or the parents learn to acquire <laughs> the flavor, but doing some easy swaps. Other things that I recommend to people if, if you're a pasta loving family, mm -hmm. swap some zucchini noodles in that. with that. To again, I learned to acquire the flavor. And I mean, you know, cauliflower has just got a whole trend going on with it. Yes. You can use cauliflower rice to make stir fries. Mm -hmm. You can use it to make, I had it as a risotto the other night at a nice. restaurant. So tasty. So there's <clears> lots <throat> of ways that you can incorporate veggies and fruits into meals that you're already eating on a regular basis to add some color, add those nutrients, add fiber, and all the things that we're wanting people to get in. Okay, so you mentioned... Um, helping your children develop a taste for specific yes. vegetables. So I'm a mother. Yes. I have, <laughs> I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. My three-year-old, interestingly, loves broccoli. I know. So crazy. So I that's, can't that's even... strange to me, but I appreciate it. Yes. My five-year-old does not like vegetables at all. So can you give parents some tips on how to help them um, incorporate vegetables and fruits for their children. Yep, you got to get creative. Yeah. So one of the best ways I recommend in the morning is to do like a fruit-based pizza. Mm -hmm. So doing, whether that could be a whole grain crust, it could even be like the little pita pizzas, mm -hmm. and doing like a vanilla Greek yogurt, and then letting your kids help layer whatever I foods they idea. like on that. So they can they get a little input, yeah. and they can add different colors. Maybe you encourage them to make the rainbow. But again, you can get some protein with the yogurt, a whole grain with the pita or the mm -hmm. whole grain crust. So that's a great way to get it in in the morning. At lunchtime, I love the bento box idea because when you get the little boxes that have four or five little mm -hmm. compartments, telling a kid, okay, we're gonna get a fruit, a vegetable, a dairy, a grain, a nut, you know, that way they can think of mixing and matching. Okay, I want this color, I want that color. And honestly, I always tell parents, like if it takes a dip to get your kids to eat vegetables, <laughs> let's do it. So maybe it's a yogurt dip for your, you know, for fruit, or maybe it's a hummus or a guacamole based dip for veggies. Mm -hmm. Again, kids like dipping, they, do they like, like fries and ketchup. So I mean, <laughs> why not try something else? <laughs> 
for snack time, skewering veggies. So a lot of times it's the way it's provided to a kid. So if it's on a stick, it might be a little more fun. So whether you're doing fruit or fruit and cheese or veggies and cheese, again, a dip could be a great option. Those are easy for kids to grab. They're things that you could prep in advance and have in the refrigerator ready for them after school. So I think that that's a great way and then that sw swapping from breakfast pizza to nighttime pizza, you know, doing a cauliflower <laughs> crust pizza could yes. be a great way to get that in. And then incorporating some veggies. There's a significant amount of research that shows when you get kids involved in the kitchen and food making process, they're going to be more likely to eat whatever they're making. I think it's because they have a little more ownership in that. So that could be as simple as laying out the pizza, cauliflower crust, and letting them just lay it imperfectly, <laughs> you know, whether that's the protein and the veggies all over it. So getting kids involved in that process, maybe you let them add things to the salad, that ownership in that and saying, okay, well, I got to help do this yeah. oftentimes can inspire them to want to try and eat it. But the thing I'll tell parents is get creative and think of different ways to incorporate those veggies in. Cause if you just give a kid a bowl of broccoli over and over and over and they don't like broccoli, yeah. The reality is they're not gonna like it. But if it shows up in their favorite pasta or shows up on pizza, all of a the sudden they might be a little more willing to try it. And don't give up. They say it can take up to 10 times for kids mm -hmm. to really learn to even like or keep trying something. So get creative on how you offer it and then offer it often. I love that. Okay, so which fruits give the most bang for their buck? So we talked a lot about mm -hmm. incorporating them into our different things that we already yes. like, but now yes. what are some things that are going to give us the most for? So important to know that all fruit is good for you, right? Okay. They all have different nutrients, yeah. obviously. You know, some people, I think from the marketing world, they get a little <laughs> mixed up with fruit. But there are some fruits that are higher in fiber, a little lower in calories per serving. So one of my top recommendations to people are berries. So blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, they're a higher fiber option. They're easy to eat. You can mix them in salads. You can put them in oatmeal. You can put them in cereal super simple to consume. People like them, but they're typically a lower calorie and higher fiber option. So when we talk about wanting to stay full a little bit longer, yes. GI health, heart health, those berries are going to be a win. And then fruits that pack antioxidants. So the berries fall into this category, cherries, pomegranates, your citrus fruits like oranges and tangerines. Those are all going to pack those antioxidants that help strengthen our immune system. So I would say fiber and antioxidants are really where you're going. It's not that you can't have the other fruits. They're all nutrient rich, but focusing on some of those that might provide a little something else besides just the nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. I'm so happy that you mentioned fiber and antioxidants yes. because Avocare has yes. two products specifically that has both of those. So our Avo Greens mm -hmm. line has an Avo Greens Greens powder as well as an Avo Greens Reds powder. Perfect. And both of them have those antioxidants that yeah. you talked about, so vitamins A, C, and E, mm -hmm. as well as phytonutrients, so phyto meaning plant and nutrients that specifically yes. come from plants. And it also has the fiber, fiber. that we need, so Yay. I'm a champion for fiber. And on top of all of that, mm -hmm. it also has prebiotic and probiotic. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's great with digestive enzymes to help us mm -hmm. with our digestive health. So I love that even if we're not getting enough fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. although this cannot supplement right. um, for truly having vegetables because they're not um, a serving of vegetables, but right. it does have some of the main components in vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits that help us. Well, and if you're gonna be drinking something, exactly. you might as well, get, a lot of people get sick of drinking plain water. Yeah. So adding a little pop of flavor can oftentimes help people encourage better hydration. So yes. if you're getting a couple of, you know, a good bang for your buck, let's <laughs> say, by getting in those nutrients as well. I'm sure they can be blended in smoothies. Exactly. So Even smoothie bowls are a fun thing. Thing now that so I what think. is a smoothie bowl? I've so a smoothie bowl, you can make it with milk. A lot of times they're made with yogurt. Okay. But you could blend in any fruit and or the powders. Mm -hmm. and you blend it into a base and then you layer it with your favorite like fruits. You can lay it with nut butters, I nuts, coconut, and you can pop them in the freezer mm -hmm. or to let them kind of harden up a little bit. Or you can do them as a fridge. But instead of a smoothie, you can actually eat it. A lot of times people will add oats or something like that as well. Idea. But yeah, this is a great thing to blend in with that yogurt to get a good base to your smoothie bowl. I see, this is why I like talking to you because yeah. I learned stuff that I never Creative, never, yeah, yes. so creative, creative. ways <laughs> to get it all in. Okay, so one of the most underrated mm -hmm. things in our diet is fiber. Yes. Um, and I feel like I'm a champion, you're a champion for yes, fiber. Yes, yes. So what are some specific types of fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. that we can eat to get fiber? I know you mentioned berries. Are there some other things that we can yes. eat? Yes. So fruits where you can eat the skin. Yes. So apples, peaches, the berries, mm -hmm. plums. So anything you can eat the skin. I was joking yesterday with the group that I was talking to. And my grandmother used to take the skin off apples. I'm like, Grandma, what That's were you doing? <laughs> Leave the skin on the apple. 
cool. Yeah. So again, getting where you can eat those skins, that's going to have some of the soluble fiber. So that heart healthy fiber. We know that fiber also helps you get full a little faster yes. and stay full a little bit longer. So getting a few grams of fiber at a snack or in addition to a breakfast or another meal can help increase satiety a little bit after that meal. And a lot of times for fruit, it'll kick a sweet craving that people have. Mm -hmm. So not only are you getting the nutrients, you're getting the fiber, another way to get kind of mix your sweet tooth with a little <laughs> bit of fruit. We talk about vegetables, really vegetables in general are like, yeah, high in fiber. They're advocates for fiber. A lot of times we're getting more of the insoluble fiber, so that's going to be great for gastrointestinal and gut health. Obviously, that fiber is going to work as a prebiotic, as you mentioned, to feed the good stuff in our gut. So really, you know, vegetables, I'm like, just eat them. Eat them however <laughs> you want. You know, and I will caution people too. A lot of people like to juice. Yeah. I would encourage people to blend. So to mm. blend or puree, get those high working blenders where you can actually blend the whole fruit or the whole vegetable because then you're going to get the fiber. If I'm just squeezing exactly. the juice out, I'm losing some of the fiber that's actually in the cellulose and hemicellulose in those layers. Yeah. So really pureeing or putting in fruits and veggies, that can be a great way to get them in in the morning or even at a snack time for you or your kids. I love that. Okay, well, that basically sums it up. But of course, yes. I want to just ask if there's anything that you'd like to add for our takeaway today. As far as what, if nothing else that we get from this, what are the top three things that Amy says we need? So the main goal, five a day. We want you to at okay. least get five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. I think that people think that that means like a whole salad is one. It's not. It's a <laughs> cup of raw veggies or a cup of lettuce or a half a cup of cook. That's not that difficult to yeah. get in. You know, it's one medium sized fruit or 15 grapes or whatever that is. So focusing on getting at least five servings a day, how can you incorporate those in over the course of the day. The second thing would really be where can you use snacks to increase your nutrient consumption. A lot of people think of a snack as a candy bar and I'm going to say look at it as a snack as an opportunity to maybe get some other foods in where you wouldn't necessarily have them. So if you love hummus, could you dip carrots in the hummus? Could you have a fruit at a snack? So snack time can be a really great opportunity to get in an extra fruit, an extra vegetable. It. And then finally I'd say get creative, both for adults and for kids. Putting fruit on pizza. We talked about, you know, cauliflower risotto or cauliflower pizza crust. Right. You know, all of those types of things, you know, mixing in the zucchini noodles, or now there's carrot noodles, beet noodles, I mean, you <laughs> yeah, name it, it's yes. there. So getting a little creative, thinking outside of the box, and I think a lot of it for families is how you're introducing it. So like, oh, we're having more vegetables. Like, this is a really fun way that we're going to eat this tonight. Get your kids involved in the process. The creativity can go a long way with increasing your liking for the different flavors. Okay, that was perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Fruits and vegetables yes. for the win. Yay. <laughs>